Amen. That should be our desire, amen, to be a seeker of God's heart, amen. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Luke, chapter number 24. Luke, chapter number 24. I was going to preach out of 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 3, and uh, I still will do that next week. Um, but uh, as I was, uh, said, I was praying about what the Lord would have me to preach, and the Lord led this direction. Luke chapter number 24, we're going to look at, uh, beginning there, verse number 32, we'll just look at three verses there, uh, then we'll have a word, word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the message uh, here uh, this morning. If you could, stand to show respect to the reading of God's word, I'd appreciate it. If you cannot, I understand, you may remain seated, but if we could, stand to show respect as we read Luke chapter number 24, and uh, we'll begin there in verse number 32. Uh, but before we do that, by the way, there was a couple, they were going to go out on a date for the evening, and uh, uh, the last thing they did was make sure to put the cat outside for the evening. Uber driver arrived as a couple walked out of the house. Uh, the cat shot right back inside. The husband went back inside to chase it out. Wife, uh, the wife, not wanting it to be known that the house would be empty, explained to the Uber driver, "Oh, he's just he's going upstairs to say goodbye to my mother." A few moments later, the husband got in the Uber and said. Phew, Sorry it took me so long. The stupid thing was hiding under the bed, and I had to poke her with a coat hanger to get her to come out. Luke chapter number 24. I'm going to stick with preaching, all right? That's, that's what I'll do. I'll stick with preaching. Luke chapter number 24. Just don't be poking any uh, hangers at each other, all right? Uh, stay away from that. Luke chapter number 24. <laughs> Amen. Beginning there, verse number 32. It says here, And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up uh, the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. I am titled the message today, Burning Hearts, Burning Hearts. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. Thank you for this time that we able, uh, we're able to gather together. And, and the Lord, just the freedom that we have, Lord, I'm just thankful for our country. I know it's not a perfect country, but Lord, we are thankful for the freedom that we have to be able to worship, Lord, without any interference or, or uh, any worry of uh, somebody coming in and doing harm or whatever, Lord. We do thank you for that uh, freedom that we have. Lord, I do pray that you would bless our time together here, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord, that we would have a burning heart for the Lord, Lord, that uh, we would desire to uh, uh, allow you to do a work here in our midst, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just set our hearts aflame, Lord, for you and the things of you, and Lord, uh, that uh, we'd have a, uh, a burning desire to share the gospel with others, Lord, that we'd have a burning desire to, to serve you, and Lord, that uh, you would be honored and glorified. Uh, through that desire, and Lord, through our efforts and through through our labors. Lord, we know we don't work to get saved. We don't work to stay saved. Lord, we know certainly we work to, uh, because we are saved, and, and uh, Lord, there's a big difference there. Lord, I do pray if there, if there is somebody here today that they don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord, speak to their heart about their need of salvation today. Lord, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, bless now our time together. Bless your word. Bless your people. Lord, help us to uh, just uh, have open hearts to what uh, God would uh, have for us. And Lord, that uh, we'd be able to see these things in the scriptures and in the message and take them and apply them to our heart and our life. Bless now our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Burning hearts, burning hearts. Excuse me. You know, the day Christ arose from the grave was a great day of victory over Satan. You know, uh, uh, it was uh, something that had happened. I mean, just uh, a great time. And But later that day in our text here, we see uh, there were uh, those that were sad. You know, uh, uh, many in the world, uh, you know, they, they were sad because uh, Christ, they thought Christ was gone. They thought Christ, uh, you know, had died and, and they thought uh, that he had not risen. And, and then we'll see here in a little bit. 
bit here uh, how, how that changed. But the world is the same. Uh, they're, they're sad for the same reason. They're without Christ. And, uh, you know, some religions uh, even leave Christ on the cross. And, and, you know, I had somebody one time, they asked me, they said, why is your cross empty? You know, and I said, well, uh, because the cross uh, is empty. Amen. Christ is not on the cross. Amen. Uh, he was uh, buried and he rose again. And uh, I said, uh, he's alive. And, and uh, that's why we don't leave him on the cross. Amen. Uh, but praise the Lord for that. But here in our text, there are two disciples. They, they leave Jerusalem on their way to Emmaus. And, and Jesus, the resurrected Christ, he's walking with them on this journey. But something interesting happens. They, they don't recognize him at first. You know, they're, uh, they're talking amongst themselves. He comes walking alongside uh, of them. We're going to see in the message here, of course, uh, how he did that. But, but uh, you know, uh, uh, they didn't recognize him. They began to tell him uh, their troubles. You know, uh, sometimes we, we tell people our troubles. You know, it's uh, amazing. Uh, uh, social media, you know, gives people uh, uh, a platform to say whatever they want to say. Or sometimes they think they, uh, they can just say whatever they want to say and uh, you know sometimes they say some dumb things amen there are some uh, some people I'm like boy you know it's, it's like that old saying it's better to be thought of fool you know keep your mouth shut and be thought of fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt amen there's some people they've just removed all doubt amen but the reality of it is this is that there are some people that uh, uh, you know they they tell their troubles, they get into like social media or whatever, and, and they don't really take their troubles to the Lord. You know, as a Christian, that ought to be our first uh, response. We ought to take our troubles to the Lord. Lord, uh, this is the trouble. This is the problem I'm having, and, and I'm glad that we can do that. But, you know, we are told here, uh, you know, by the way, let me back up. Sometimes uh, as we talk with someone, though, our, our hearts begin to uh, burn, you know, we, we begin to desire to talk with them. And our hearts are knit together. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I remember Mrs. Naomi and I, when we, uh, when we were courting, we had a long distance relationship. So I lived here in Eau Claire and she lived down in uh, Plainview, Texas. So uh, that was a long ways away, amen, uh, driving. It usually take about... Uh, 17, 18 hours, something like that. Uh, flying, it was about a three-hour flight, if I remember correctly. I don't remember exactly how, how long it was, but uh, whatever it was, uh, we'd uh, uh, I'd go and see her. I only flew out there. We, we saw each other from the time we started courting uh, to the time we actually got married. We saw each other four times. That was it. So I learned to communicate uh, with her. You know, uh, there was times, you know, uh, it'd be uh, two o'clock in the morning. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, no, you hang up. Okay, I'll hang up. Oh, you didn't hang up? Oh, no, I did. I'm not hanging up. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to hang up when you hang up, you know? Why? We wanted to talk with one another. Amen. And that's the way it should be as a Christian. You should desire and have such a love for the Lord that you want to talk with him and you want him to talk with you. Amen. Here in our text, uh, in these uh, two hearts, uh, as they're traveling along, they're talking with Jesus, they're, they're discouraged, and, and there's some things that we can l certainly learn from them and how Jesus uh, certainly uh, talked with them and, and what he did that helped them and, and how that can help us even here today. I've got just, uh, uh, I believe it's three things that hopefully will help and encouragement uh, to each of you uh, today. First of all, number one, we see how Jesus mended their broken hearts. How Jesus mended their broken hearts. Uh, look at me back in our text there in Luke chapter number 24 and uh, beginning there in verse number 13. Of course, uh, on the first day of the week, if you were to go back to the beginning of the chapter here, that's when Jesus uh, uh, has arisen from the dead. He is uh, out of the grave. They come to the sepulcher. There's uh, uh, Mary and Martha. They come to the, uh, uh, the sepulcher there and... Uh, they find it empty, and of course, uh, uh, then uh, Peter finds out about it, and, and Peter and John, as a matter of fact, and uh, they go and see and, and find that uh, the uh, place was empty where he was laid. And uh, then in verse number, picking up in verse 13, it says, Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened, and it came came to pass that while they communed uh, together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 
but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye are uh, the, ye have one to another as ye walk and are, notice that last word, sad. And the one of them, uh, whose name was uh, Cleopas, uh, answering, uh, said unto him, Art thou only, uh, only a stranger in Jerusalem, ha- and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word uh, before God and all the people, and how the, the uh, chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we uh, trusted that it had been he which uh, should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. You know, here they are, they're talking uh, one to another, and you ever talked about something and, and somebody all of a sudden, you know, you realize they're in the conversation? My wife and I, I'll, I'll tell you this, by the way, parents, be very careful about what you talk about around your children. You know, uh, uh, my children, they don't know uh, if there's a problem with, uh, you know, an individual or whatever. We may uh, say, hey, we don't want you hanging around with this person. We may not tell them why, but uh, they'll listen to us and, and say, okay, uh, we'll, we'll do that. But we don't talk about uh, problems. Uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, Mrs. Naomi and I, you know, if we have disagreements, our children will never know about it. Amen. And that's just uh, for free. But but I'll tell you this: there are times that you just uh, sometimes are talking about something, and you realize somebody else is there, and you're like, oh, hey, uh, you know, they become part of that conversation. Here they are. There's two uh, two disciples. Cleopas is one of them, and they're uh, they're on their way to Emmaus, and they're, uh, they're, they're, there was a sad uh, uh, sadness in their conversation of what had happened to Jesus in Jerusalem. And uh, Jesus, he draws uh, close to them, and and uh, at their time of sadness. By the way, uh, in, in interesting. Any time we are in our moment of sadness, many times we feel alone. But Jesus promised us, "I will never leave thee." Nor what? Amen. He's always there with us. But the conversation with Jesus began to reveal their broken hearts. He, he even asked them, he said, what things? And they're like, what, what, what are, you, are you a stranger here? Haven't you? Don't you know what's been going on? And, and uh, they began to tell him about Jesus and what had happened. And we thought he was going to be the redeemer of Israel. By the way, he still was and still is today. Amen. He's a redeemer of all mankind. But here they were thinking, oh man, he's going to be the one to redeem us. They were thinking of the temporal time, and they weren't thinking of the eternal. They were thinking of, oh, you know, we have the Roman Empire. They were oppressive. By the way, they were an oppressive uh, government. Amen. They, uh, 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 the idea of streetlights came from the Roman Empire. You say, well, how, how is that? They would put people on poles and light them on fire along roadways, and uh, that's how they would light the the roadway, and and uh, you know it would cause uh, you know there to be a torch light, you know a human torch, amen, and uh, uh, that's how uh, that's how we got the idea of street lights, but. The thing about the Roman Empire, yes, it was very oppressive, but Jesus wasn't here. Uh, he didn't come to uh, you know, Jerusalem. He didn't come to the earth just to redeem them away from the Roman Empire. He came to redeem all mankind from their sin. Amen? And from that eternity in hell, the, the etern- eternal damnation. That's why he, he came. But in this conversation, we certainly see some things that happen. They, they were discouraged. By the way, many times discouraged hearts are oftentimes broken hearts. You ever had somebody break your heart? Amen. You ever had somebody disappoint you? I've had people disappoint me. Amen. You know, sometimes uh, you think, well, you know, this person, uh, uh, you know, they must, uh, they must have everything right, and then they, they uh, mess up and they disappoint you. You know, I'm glad, by the way, uh, by the way, if you say, well, I've never had anybody disappoint me, well, just hold on. Uh, somebody will probably get in line to disappoint you soon, amen? But the reality of it is that many times discouraged hearts are broken hearts, and then and then depressed hearts are oftentimes broken hearts. 
depression is a real thing. It's a, it does happen, and, and people can become depressed. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't believe uh, uh, that every single person that's depressed needs to be on medication, but there are some that uh, they have to have some kind of medication in order to help them. And, and I'm not knocking that. If you're on some kind of medication, uh, we're not against that. Amen? But I'll tell you this, that many times uh, depression is a result of a, a person's conditional, uh, the, the, the condition of their heart. Not every single time. I, now, don't misunderstand me here. But many times that is why somebody is depressed. They're not in the word of God. You know, I've, I've seen where, where people get away from the word of God and, and uh, the word of God is there to be a help to us. Amen. Don't read the book of Revelation if you're depressed, amen? Don't, just stay away from it. Read the book of Psalms. Read the book of Proverbs. There's going to be a lot of good things you're going to find in there. But that's what they were. They were discouraged. They were depressed. They were even resigned about what had happened. And we see there that resigned hearts are oftentimes broken hearts. But then we see something uh, happen here. We see how Jesus begins to mend their broken hearts. First of all, he walks with them even though they don't recognize him. He didn't say, hey, it's me, Jesus. Hey, I'm here with you. Hey, do you see I'm walking with you? No, he didn't do that. He just comes alongside of them. Hey, why are you guys sad? What, are you a stranger? Don't you know what just happened here? What things? And so they began to bear their heart to him. I'm glad that Jesus comes alongside of us and we can bear our heart to him. Amen? Doesn't matter what we're facing, doesn't matter what we're dealing with, but we can talk to him. He's the one that will listen. You ever had a friend that just says, hey, if you ever need somebody just to talk to, don't be, be afraid to give me a call. Amen? We've got some pastor friends like that. that once in a while, they'll call me up. Brother Hal, I just need, a, I need an ear to listen. Go ahead, unload it. Amen? <laughs> You know what I do with it? I just give it to the Lord. Here, Lord, this is their problem. This is their problem issue. Uh, Lord, there's no, nothing I can do about it. Sometimes I'll maybe give them some advice or, you know, if the Holy Spirit leads me to, to say something, you know, to be an encouragement to them, sometimes that happens, but not all the time. But I'm glad that Jesus, uh, he, he walked with them. And then notice something that he does. Notice in verse number 17, he says, and he said unto them, what well, manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? You know, he's asking them, hey, what's wrong? I'm glad the Lord does care about what we're going through. Amen. He cares about uh, what we're dealing with. He'll ask you many times, hey, what's wrong? Amen. Sometimes the Lord uh, already, by the way, the Lord already knows the answer. Sometimes he's trying to get us to talk to him about where we're at spiritually or where we're at uh, in our problems or where we're, what we're dealing with, amen? And he knows, uh, uh, knows the hurts that we have, you know. Uh, he draws them out of us. And, and uh, notice what he said there in verse number 19. And he said unto them, what things? You know, God desires for us to bring all of our burdens to him. The Bible tells us, casting all your burden, uh, all you care upon him, for he, what? Cares for you. Amen. You and I need to realize that God does care about us. And Jesus is the healer of broken hearts. I'm glad that he can take our, our broken and, and uh, uh, you know, broken pieces of our life and he can mold them back together. And you can sometimes look at a situation and think, well, there's no way that God can fix this. I'm glad to know that God is the God of the impossible. Amen. He can take impossible situations, impossible people, and he can uh, mold them into you know, the image of his son. Amen. Sometimes we get impatient, don't we? We say, well, God, this ought to be fixed right away. And God says, no, it'll be fixed in my time. Amen. So we see there, number one, how Jesus mended their broken hearts. Number one, we see how Jesus mended their broken hearts. But number two, we also see how Jesus restored their backslidden hearts. We see how Jesus restored their backslidden hearts. He said, well, pastor, they weren't really backslidden. Watch, watch carefully. Look at verse number uh, 22 and following. 
It says, yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that uh, they had also seen a vision of angels, which uh, said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us uh, went to the sepulcher and found it even as the women had said, but uh, him they saw, saw not. Then uh, he say, uh, said unto them, O fools and slow of hearts, uh, heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these sayings and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all this, uh, the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures of things concerning himself. You know, they had believed in him. Now they were just saying nice things about him. They had believed that, hey, you know, he was going to come. He was going to be the redeemer of Israel. And, and wow, this, uh, this is going to be great. And we're going to be uh, free from this repressive government. And then, of course, they see him die. And then they, they hear about him, uh, you know, being uh, in, you know, put in the sepulcher. And, and uh, you know, they even said, hey, uh, we've, not, we've not seen him yet. We, we didn't see this happen. We've heard some people talk about it. We, we heard these couple ladies had gone there and, and uh, to the sepulcher and he wasn't there. And the, roll, the stone was rolled away, but we didn't see it happen. And notice the response that Jesus had to them. He said, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe. You know, sometimes we get to the point, you know, they... they let me back up for a moment. They had seen and expected to see some miracles. They got to see many, many miracles happen before them. Remember the disciples uh, got to see a lot of things happen. And, and uh, I've often th said this before. I actually preached a message about this. You know, Jesus had told them, hey, and, you know, uh, I'll die and in three days I'll be raised up again. Amen? The disciples heard that. The, the, the disciples knew that. But not a one of them was sitting at the tomb waiting for Jesus saying, hey, he said he's going to rise from the dead the third day. This is the third day. Hey, let's, let's roast some marshmallows, amen. Let's, uh, let's watch this happen. I want to see this thing happen, amen. Not a one of them were there. Why? Because they had doubted. That's why Jesus said to them, oh, fools and slow of heart. Why? Sometimes we get to that backslidden uh, condition ourselves. They doubted his resurrection. We didn't, we didn't see this happen. We don't know that. They, there's some ladies that said that happened, and they said, that, they said they saw this. They said they saw an angel, but, but we've not seen him yet. They were slow of heart to believe. Even uh, there was one person that said, Lord, I believe helped on mine unbelief. Amen. At one time they had dared, but now all of a sudden they're doubtful. At one time they had expected redemption, now they, they had retreated. At one time they were thrilled about God, and now all of a sudden they're chilled about him. Oh, I don't know about this. I, I don't know about this God. I don't know about this Christ. He said he was going to rise from the dead, but we've not seen it happen yet. Well, they had a, had a backslidden heart. By the way, it's easy to fall into a backslidden state. Many Christians are backslidden because they don't live their lives like Christ is coming back today. That's the reason why people go off into sin. They don't think, hey, Jesus is coming today, so I need to respond. You know, by the way, could you imagine the last things you ever, you know, I, uh, the last thing I ever said to my dad on the face of this earth was, hey, dad, I love you. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. That's all I said. That's the last thing I said to him. He had wanted me, uh, the conversation was about having a haircut. And my brother was over there getting his haircut. He said, Tim, you want to come over and get your haircut? I've, I've got it out. I've got it ready. And Todd, I'm cutting Todd's hair right now. I'm like, nah, dad, I'll, I'll come tomorrow. Or I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm sorry, I told him I'd do it Monday. And I said, but I'll see you tomorrow. But I, I said, no, I'll get my haircut on Monday. And he said, well, son, I, I've already got it ready. Why don't you just come over? And I said, no, I got a lot, lot to get done. I said, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, but I'll, I'll get it cut on Monday. I said, hey, dad, I love you. He goes, son, I love you too. I'll see you tomorrow. And that was it. I'm glad the last conversation I had on the face of this earth with my earthly father was a good conversation. Amen. 
By the way, parents, you ought to have a good conversation with your children. Amen? Your children ought to know that you, that you love them. Grandparents, your grandchildren ought to, ought to know that you love them. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. Well, just, what if this is the last day on the face of this earth? What's it compared to eternity? Amen? Uh, spouses, what about you? It's the last conversation you've had with your spouse. Amen? You and I as Christians need to realize, hey, we need to live as if Christ is coming back today. It will change how we act towards people. It'll change how we respond to people. It'll change what we say to people. Amen? The problem is, as many times we have a backslidden heart, we don't even realize it. People live in the moment as, uh, with no thought of Christ in their life. They don't think about, hey, how will this impact uh, for uh, me for all eternity? Or how will this impact others for all eternity? They're thinking about right now, that's it. But you know, Jesus, he does this uh, interestingly enough. Jesus restores their backslidden hearts. He doesn't just sit there and say, well, that's it. You guys are a bunch of bums. You're backslidden. You're slow of heart. I'm done talking to you. I'm going the other way. He doesn't do that. Amen. Instead, if you notice in verse 27, and beginning at Moses, <laughs> could you imagine that conversation? I've, I've often thought of what Jesus actually said to them. I know he talks about that he begins at Moses, but, but beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them, uh, uh, them in all the scriptures of things concerning himself. He's pointing back to, hey, this is what's coming. Hey, this is what, what's coming. This is who's coming, Amen. Being a Mosey teaches in the scriptures and, and sometimes you just have to get back into the Bible. By the way, every single time you get into the backslidden state, most times the first thing that goes is this right here. I don't want to read it. I get into conviction. Amen! <laughs> People, one of the first things they do is they neglect their Bible reading. Well, I don't want to be convicted about that. Well, just, I know pastor said I had to read, you know, uh, some scripture every single day, but I just, I don't feel like it today. You know, on those days that I don't feel like it, I force myself to read the Bible. You say, there are days that you don't feel like reading your Bible? Yeah. There are days that I don't feel like reading my Bible. Why? I'm tired exhausted. Maybe perhaps it's just been a bad day the day before. I don't really feel like getting into God's word uh, the next day. Why? I'm human. Amen. But those are the days I sit there and uh, drag my old carcass out of bed. And I'll say, nope, I need to be in God's word today. Well, I may only read a chapter that day, but I'll certainly get into God's word. It's there to be a help to you. Amen. You see, that's how God speaks to us. That's how Jesus can walk with us right there beside us by us getting into his word. And that's exactly what happened there. Jesus began to uh, talk to them and, and uh, share with them the scriptures. Could you imagine that Bible study? Could you imagine that conversation? What a, what a, what a uh, conversation that must have been. Hey, let me tell you about Moses and, and what happened. And then, and then he begins to uh, talk about all the other uh, uh, prophets that, that were foretelling him of his coming. Hey, let me tell you about what Micah said, amen? Hey, let me tell you what, what Jeremiah said over and over. Even Isaiah, Isaiah, I'm, I'm sure he probably quoted Isaiah. But see, they saw how the scriptures spoke of him. Faith all of a sudden is restored. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. It's the word of God that will change us. It's the word of God that many times restores our faith. We realize, oh, hey, this is what God's trying to tell me. This is what God's trying to show me right here. It's right there before me. Amen. Faith is restored, and, and especially when we take in and apply the word of God. Their backslidden heart had been restored by fellowship with Christ. By the way, 
when you have a renewed fellowship with Christ, your heart will be restored. But you gotta get into God's word. It's so important. Oh, we see there how Jesus restored their backslidden hearts. Number one, as far as having burning hearts, number one, we see how Jesus mended their broken hearts. Number two, we see how Jesus restored their backslidden hearts. But lastly, number three, we see how Jesus set their hearts afire. We see how Jesus sets their hearts afire. Look back in, in our text with me there, verse number 28, Luke chapter number 24, verse number 28. And they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at me with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us? while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures. You know, uh, here they are, they're, they're uh, sitting there and talking with Jesus and, you know, I could, I've, I've tried to picture in my mind's eye this meal. They're sitting there, they're eating, amen. You ever ate with somebody and then they have to, you know, eat and run? They're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I gotta go, Amen. But with this one, it was a little different. He's sitting there, hey, hey, oh, hey, Jesus, hey. And all of a sudden, he's gone. Amen. Could you imagine that? You're sitting there eating and enjoying a meal, and all of a sudden you realize, hey, this is, this is the one I've been looking for. But if you notice something that they say in verse number 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us? While we talked, uh, while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened uh, to us the scriptures, hey, wasn't there burning in my heart, in your heart? They're not talking about heartburn, all right? That's not, that's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about, hey, you know, we need to take a few tums, amen? We had heartburn or Rolaids or whatever. You know, that's not what they're talking about, amen? They're talking about, hey, wow. As we were talking with him, didn't, wasn't there a desire in your heart to talk more with him? As we were talking with him, wasn't, wasn't there more of a desire to stay with him? And remember, they even say, hey, why don't you, why don't you uh, come with us? You know, it's uh, about evening here. And, and they constrained him. And remember, he's saying, uh, he's making as if he's going to go a little further. And they're like, hey, why don't you stick around with us? We, we really enjoy this. We've enjoyed this conversation. Amen. You ever had a conversation with somebody and, and it seems like uh, it just goes on and on and on and, and it seems like it never ends? We have Brother Slama and I, we have a standing joke, amen? Every once in a while, there's, there are different people. On Sunday nights especially, it seems like uh, people take turns and that's fine, amen? I'm okay with that. There'll be some people that'll stay till, you know, after church. Church gets done about 7.15 on, on a uh, Sunday night. And, and uh, some people stand around and fellowship. And pretty soon, next thing we know, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight. You say, are you serious, Pastor? Yep. And every once in a while, Brother Dan and I, you know, we'll be standing there and all of a sudden, you know, conversation will start back up. And, and uh, we always joke about, you know, it's one of those... Uh, you know, a weed whacker, you know, like, you know, you're getting that conversation going again. And, and every once in a while, I'm like, ring, ding, 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 brother Dan. <laughs> you're like, oh, yep, yep, it's time to go, Pastor. I got to go. Amen. But you know, there are times that you just enjoy somebody's fellowship. Amen. I've had a number of folks like that. And we just enjoy being around each other. But you see, their hearts burned within them while he talked with them, by the way. That's when their hearts were burning. Hey, their hearts were burning within them while he opened to them the scriptures. That's why they had a burning heart for him. Their, uh, their eyes were open to recognize him. Why? Because his fellowship and his Bible study, all of a sudden, you know, uh, they're, they're sitting there in fellowship with him and all of a sudden their eyes are open. They say, oh, hey, this is Jesus. Boom, he's gone. Amen. I, I've uh, often tried to sit there and think about what that would have been like. 
the breaking of, of bread with his pierced hands. You know, I've often thought maybe perhaps as he was handing them the bread, all of a sudden they take the bread from his hand and the Bible doesn't tell us this, but we know he had nail pierced hands, amen? But maybe while they were eating bread, all of a sudden they noticed his hands. You know, the problem with a lot of people, they don't really pay attention to people as they're talking to them, Amen. Sometimes when, uh, uh, when people are in conversation, there's uh, a lot of things that there are uh, um, unspoken uh, ways of communicating with people. Amen? And there, are, there is oftentimes body language, you know? If somebody's talking to you and they're doing this, What's that tell you? They're not interested in what you're saying, right? You're like, oh, oh, yeah, I guess it's time for me to go. Amen. <laughs> but if they're sitting there listening intently and, and wow, they're interacting with you, they're, they're uh, conversing back and forth. Wow, this, uh, really? D- that happened to you? Are you kidding me? Tell me more about that. Amen. You know, uh, uh, when, uh, when I went uh, the, d- to do the uh, skydiving thing, uh, I didn't go actually skydiving. It was a simulator, but it's, uh, it's actually the wind. It's like a wind tunnel, and you get in there. It's called iFly. It's over in Minnesota, and, and uh, I got to actually do that, amen, and, and I had some conversations with some people, and they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I got a video about it. Hey, let me show you. And uh, there I am, you know, uh, and I had this uh, collar, and a uh, collared shirt, and the collared shirt came up and was whacking me in my, my throat here and and I'm like uh, trying to trying to pull at it and and the later the guy said oh it's it's got to be inside your suit and and finally got it in there I was able to enjoy the last uh, ten seconds of of my flight time amen but it was a lot of fun somebody would ask me would you actually go skydiving probably not I enjoyed the tunnel amen. I got to enjoy that I, I probably no, never something I'll do ever again but but I enjoyed it but you know that's what you do. You want to talk with somebody. You want to uh, converse with them. But something else, as a Christian, we need to have burning hearts. You see, what did the burning heart uh, do for the disciples? Notice with me real quick, like what happens to them. We need to have burning hearts like they did. In verse number 33, and following it says, and they rose up uh, the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 gathered together and them that were uh, with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. They're like, hey, hey, this Jesus that we told you about, guess what? He is risen. We seen him. Amen. That's what happened when their hearts were put aflame. That's what happened when they began to have burning hearts again. They began to uh, just to desire to tell others. It changed their direction, amen? First they were sad and they were uh, going down to the road of, of Emmaus and then all of a sudden they're glad and they're going back to Jerusalem. Hey, hey, let's go back. Let's go tell them what happened. Let's uh, tell them what, uh, what we've seen here, amen? It made them seek other Christians and meet with them made them a a blessing to others. They were able to tell uh, the other disciples, hey, he is risen indeed. Just just so you know, he is risen, amen? Just like he said. You know what's encouraging to me? I I am so glad for technology, amen? Praise the Lord for it. We have some folks that are sick. I'm sure they're probably home watching today. Praise the Lord for that, amen? But it just doesn't replace the fellowship that you can get from other Christians at church, amen? Amen? I had somebody one time, they said, Pastor, just, there's something about being in God's house. Amen? I, and they said, I don't get it online. I, I enjoy being able to watch online, but there's just something about being in God's house. And you and I many times need that fellowship, that encouragement. Sometimes we think, well, I'm the only one going through this. I'm the only one dealing with this. Nobody else is dealing with this. Until you begin to talk with others and you're like... Oh, oh, you have the same problem. Oh, uh, you're dealing with this too. Oh, I didn't realize uh, you've had this problem too, amen. By the way, Jesus can set your heart aflame as well. He can give you a burning heart, not heartburn, amen. 
He can give you a burning heart for the things of God. So let us seek the Lord. Let us have a burning heart. So how can we do this? We need to walk with the Lord. Let's ask the Lord to set our hearts afire today. Is your heart broken today? Guess what? Come to Jesus. Let him mend it today. Are you backslidden today? Guess what? If your heart is turned from the Lord and the things of God, come to, come to Jesus and he'll restore it today. Is your heart maybe in need of revival? Is your heart in need of being set afire uh, for God? Come to Jesus. He'll light it today. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Have your head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. Burning hearts. Perhaps you're here today, you'd say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home, but I'd like to be sure. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? The other question then is this. You say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. But I've had a broken heart. Maybe you say, I've had a backslidden heart. Or maybe you say, well, I just, I just need a, a revived heart. God spoke to my heart during the message this morning. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate the need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Boy, there are hands all over this auditorium here, here this morning. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? I see those hands are back over here as well. Anybody else? Pastor, would you pray for me? God spoke to my heart. Would you pray for me? Lord, I, 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 Pastor, I, I, wanna, I want the Lord to mend my broken heart. I've, I've had a broken heart about some things in my life. Pastor, would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that here this morning? Yes, thank you. I see that hand. See that one as well. Anybody else? Thank you. We slip them down. Pastor, pray for me. God spoke my heart during the message today. Anybody else? In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk with the Lord. Come and do business with him. You can ease these steps as an old-fashioned altar. You can call, and call out to the Lord. I'm so glad that the Bible tells us, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God desires to do a work in your heart and life even this morning. Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless now this invitation time, Lord. I pray to be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone stand to their feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. If God spoke in your heart.